Now, if we want the vehicles of the future to go faster and to run longer than any before them, we're gonna need more powerful engines and we're gonna have to figure out how to fuel them. Maverick inventor and test pilot Paul Mahler spent 40 years and over $100 million to get his flying sky car off the ground. The highlight of my life, which is kind of ironic to ridiculous to say this is when I completed my two-minute flight and I said to myself I'm going to live and I said that to myself I really thought the chance I was, that I would die was very high from there he spent the next 14 years refining a unique rotary engine called the Wankel for use in everything from scooters to hybrid cars to UFO looking rescue craft it's particularly simple in the sense that it has only t two moving parts, which is remarkable since even the two-stroke engine has three, and a piston engine doing the same job would have over 30. Large amount of power in a small package, it's almost like the, the magic engine for this magic sky car. This 65-pound engine produces over 200 horsepower, three times the norm. He believes in his engines so much that he wants them to become generators that run on, of all things, garbage. We're at a large landfill, a place where you get rid of your garbage. The garbage is brought here, it's put into a large pile, and of course over a period of time it decomposes, producing various gases, but the one we refer to commonly as sour gas or biogas. The problem with sour gas is it's not pure natural gas. It's about 50% methane, 50% carbon dioxide. That combination doesn't really work very well in an engine. That's because it can literally choke an engine. What's worse, 92% of landfills don't produce enough sour gas to justify massive turbine generators. Paul wants to change that. When there is a situation where either the engine's down or the landfill's too small to utilize the gas, they will flare it. And the power behind me, the flare is down in the tower, so you don't see it like you traditionally in the past have done, but it's still there, it's still wasting energy. 40% of the world's natural gas that comes out of the ground is sour gas. Refineries need to clean it up at great expense before it can be used. Another untapped market. He said, my God, that's even bigger than we thought. We use sour gas directly from the source, use it to power our engines. Our engines then run a generator, producing electricity, which goes into the national grid. At least that's what he's trying to show today on his portable test bed. This is what's called a dyno facility, a device that measures the power of an engine. An engine drives a energy absorption unit, we measure the forces that are generated, most in the form of torque, and we have the RPM so we know the horsepower. The test day will be the test establishing how low a methane we can run. So we can vary the methane, the CO2. Those are the two major components in sour gas. Pretty good results, actually. The engine ran on natural gas, 50%, actually in this case, 40% methane or natural gas and 60% CO2. And CO2 is not doing you any good. I love this engine. So how can Paul's rotary engine handle it? In our engine, we're talking about operating at 1,000 PSI pressures and at over 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. So needless to say, there are no particulates coming out of our engine. Everything is completely burned. Even hydrogen sulfite, another ingredient of sour gas. A good thing because when it's exposed to engine oil, it turns into sulfuric acid, a corrosive material that devastates engines. Our engine does not have a lubrication system in the traditional sense. We pump a little bit of oil in, it all goes to the engine and out. So we never contaminate the lubrication system with the hydrogen sulfide, turning it into sulfuric acid. Our engine's unique that way. Paul will continue collecting data in hopes of selling his engines to landfills around the world. So our engine does something nobody else's engine does. And that is an entree into the engine marketplace. We've got letters of intent conditional orders for three and a half million engines. And that would give him the funds to restart his dream project. My dream is still to fly this. About 95% of the flights in the world are less than a thousand miles. That's an opportunity to change that. There's a point in time where you would like to dial up and have something land on your driveway and you get in and you get go anywhere you want. We're gonna come back. The sky cars are always basically there in the new era. 
is fundamental to everything that I've done for the last 50 years.